judgment, not be impulsive. You know, just make sure that you're able to help someone else who may not be able to help themselves. Now, this is all for in light of something uneventful may happen, but we want to be prepared and we want to make sure that we have a safety plan in place. And guess what? If you volunteer for that ministry, you can help us see that through. Now, one thing that would be helpful if you are a former police officer, military, EMS, or work any kind of service job, we would love to have you be a part of this ministry. Listen, if this is interesting to you and it's something that you want to do, feel free to reach out to me, Derek Carr, at dcarr at ssclive.org. Look, the church needs you. Thank you. Hey y'all, Maddie's just open. Let's go! What you like about Maddie's? Everything. <laughs> and she has come over to Maddie's kitchen to purchase about three, four dinners over here. <laughs> <laughs> Food is so tasty. She, you know, second only to my own, but you know, this is, this is my mother. <laughs> What's your favorite thing, Miss Vicky Cook? Fried chicken. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's just something about chicken. For one thing, I like the owner of Miss Maddie. It begins there. <laughs> of course, Miss Vicky. Miss Vicky is the Miss Vicky, Miss Vicky, is the Miss Vicky she's so welcoming and she, she's about the community. So I just love Miss Vicky. I love the presentation. I love the atmosphere. The best soul food your, your taste buds can handle, okay? I love the baked chicken. Well, most of all, I love that gravy that goes on the chicken. It is mm, mm good. <laughs> so, Miss Jones, I see you got a plate in your hand, and that's from Maddie's Kitchen. What you got, girl? Well, I have greens, mac and cheese. You have to have a little sweet potatoes, the extra right, side right, right. to go with that mac and cheese. <laughs> And of course, her delicious baked chicken with yes. gravy. Yeah. And now, if she's a second witness to say something about this baked chicken, I mean, <laughs> mm -mm, good. Uh, I'm about to get me some of that baked chicken it's, with some gravy. Don't all right? Get it. The best potato salad, the best uh, mac and cheese. How about this? What about greens? Yes. With the little cabbage added into it and some cornbread on the side. I mean, mm -mm, good. <laughs> Man, you can't get this anyplace else. And it's gonna be what? Mm-mm, good. <laughs> Hey, my St. Stephen Church family and friends, this is Kevin James here. You know, I remember an old song we used to sing that says, He's done so much for me, I just can't tell it all. And I get so excited when I personally think about all that God has done for me and my family during these uncertain times. I cannot tell it all. Family, we can't ever repay Him for His goodness, but we can be obedient and give back what He requires. 2 Samuel 24, 24 says, The king replied, I will not offer sacrifices to the Lord my God, burnt offerings that cost me nothing. Wow, it's so exciting to be able to give back to God. So hey, here's how you can give back to God through St. Stephen Church. Number one, if you're worshiping with us in person today, you can give by placing your gift in the offering receptacle located outside of the sanctuary doors right after this service. Number two, you can give online at ssclive.org. Number three, you can text SSC Live to 833-602-0575. Number four, you can cash at us at dollar sign SSC Live 1.
welcome to the pre-worship experience. It's now known as The Scene. Watching us online. Welcome to the senior jump start for worship. You know, this month, we no last month, four years we've been doing this program. Four years. That is a four blessing. Four years. It wow. doesn't seem that long. It, right. It just doesn't. Wow. wow. Time four is years of Good. keeping you informed and abreast of what's going on here at St. Stephen Church, also in our community. I'm your host, Miss Crystal. And I am your other host, Eric <laughs> Carr, the son of St. Stephen. You know what? Next week, I'm super excited because April always brings about because that's my anniversary of being here at St. Stephen. Oh Do you gosh. know next week it will be 25 years? Wow. I have been a part of this ministry. Wow. Wow. I, I feel think like an amen goes right there. <laughs> 25, 25 years. years. So, yeah. how did you get here to St. Stephen? So, um, I was at another church and I was coming with some of my friends. I was in, I uh, went to UofL at the time and Bible study was so crazy. Then. Yeah. And so Bible study was like church. So it was like, we well, going to St. Stephen's for Bible study. And I was in Black Diamond. So Tanya uh, Triplett was the director. Yes. Um, and so she invited all of us all the time. So I finally came. Somebody had a car. I didn't. <laughs> and uh, I jumped in and we came and it, I went here for Bible study for two years. Wow. And then finally, uh, one Saturday I was here and right there, and Reverend Cosby was sitting there and I met him. We talked. He said, well, you know what? your heart should be where your membership is. Mm -hmm. They should match. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh-oh. Right. And I just walked right over to the lady and said, yes, I need to be here. And it's wow. Like, and the rest is history. And now he's like the son of St. Stephen. Of Saint and I tell you what, whenever I thought about St. Stephen, I always thought about Derek Carr and he had these dreads. And whenever I said, I said what is that with them dreads? Look at him. So <laughs> that was a long way ago, but yes. All right. Hey. Years. We've got so much to share with you today. Again, we thank you so much for joining us on the scene. And uh, these wonderful, are we going to get to them first or are we going to do our recap? Let's do the recap real quick and then we'll get to them. Because I do want to ask Shakanda a couple things about the recap. She has a piece that she wants to talk about. Yes, uh, Shakanda. Bit. So let's talk about Easter Sunday. Oh, yes. my God. Awesome. The Lord was in this place. Oh, it was man. it was such an amazing and spirit-filled service. Pastor, the ABCs of of God, when he just started mm. saying what A was and yes. what he was with yes. B, and he just yes. kept going and going and going. I don't know how that man does it, wow. but he does it every <laughs> single time. Absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. Such a blessed occasion, and it was so wonderful to have people we haven't seen in a long yes. time yeah. worship with us in house. Some of y'all are still online this uh, Sunday. <laughs> how you doing? But it was so good to have everybody in the house, uh, chairs in the aisles, yeah. and it just really felt like a grand experience. My daughter enjoyed herself because the children's ministry was in the gym they had a dj they had tables yeah. with activities yeah. and so they really did it up for the kids big shout outs to courtney in the children's ministry but it was just a really great time great time yeah all right uh there was a lot of things simmering over at simmons college and we're going to be speaking more in depth about what took place at simmons college but first we told you about it and it happened this week a dedication to diane porter a giant in education in this community and Simmons College dedicated a building in her honor. We'll get to that coming up here in a bit. And uh, Buster Soares was here Wednesday yeah. night. And, yes. Uh, John McGee also played again Wednesday mm -hmm. night with the band. It was a uh, high time, just a great time. And then, of course, the second annual from uh, Memorandum Memorand to uh, Movement, the MLK Celebration, uh, it was so amazing. Shakanda, I know you had a chance to be here in person. Yes, I was online. Right. Yes, Tell us right. a little bit about your experience, please. They said it went three hours. I didn't wow. even recognize it because I was just so caught up into the spirit, the message, the energy within the building. 
my God. <laughs> my God. Freddie Haynes, he brought it. He brought it. Which yeah. he always does. Yeah. Yeah. I, I told him I, I've been following him since cassette tape. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. You have been following me. So it was just amazing. It was amazing. And I can't wait till next year. Oh, wow. wow. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Wow. It yeah. was definitely a big moment and a big announcement was made from Simmons College. And uh, we'll be getting yes. to that coming up here in a bit. But uh, you, you've got these wonderful people here. Everyone's familiar with their face. She's always on the front row of the choir. <laughs> and everybody knows this. Everybody one. knows him. <laughs> yep, everybody knows. The mayor of Jeffersonville. Yes, yes. <laughs> it really is. It really is. <laughs> and that's none other than Brother Robin Bryant. Yes. And then we have Sister Shaconda James. Yes. Um, and they're up here for a reason because yesterday something amazing also happened. Yes. We celebrated our volunteers yes. yesterday. If yes. you were not here yes. yesterday, yes. you missed a yes. good time. Yes. I mean, it was just like an old school barbecue. Somebody was, uh, De Langston was DJing, oh, yeah, yeah. Michael. Yes. We had dancers, look at, look at Shikanda. <laughs> we had giveaways. We just had a lot of fun, a lot of laughter, and just a lot of thankfulness to thank our volunteers for what they do. We cannot do anything thing by ourselves yeah. and so I just want to thank the staff for being available those who came and served and was a part of it and made sure that it went smooth because you can't ask the volunteers to volunteer at the volunteer event it don't right. make sense <laughs> so the staff did everything but the best thing that I loved about it even when it was over the people start cleaning up. They just, they, just, it was just a volunteer in them they just couldn't stop and it was just such a such a great time and we cannot thank the person that worked behind the scenes, and that's always Miss Angela yes. Lucere. Oh, Thank you yes. for all she did. Come to on, bring come on, Versace, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Versace Jagasuk, yes. stand on up. Let them see you. Yes. Angela does a lot, so much that people do yes. not know. She is the brains of a lot of things that are going on in St. Stephen, and we will not be who we are without her. So thank God for Angela Lucere. But want to talk to Robin and Shikanda because they've always volunteered here at the church. So Robin used to be the hospitality coordinator for the Tabernacle Choir, and he was just always on something, always doing something. Robin, why is it so important for you to volunteer? Well, Hold the I, mic up. well <laughs> I thank God for giving me the strength to volunteer. Uh, I owe all credit to him, and I just enjoy it. You get to smile at people. They smile at you. Uh -huh. uh, it's just wonderful to be able to just reach out to other folks and to uplift Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's another thing you do that I know a lot of people don't know about. You do something with X Zero with the Indiana Church. Yes, Tell us uh -huh. a little bit about that. Every third Friday of the month, we're at X Zero in Jeffersonville, and uh, we feed the homeless. So oh, if you all would like to come out and volunteer with us, we'd like to have you. But it's a good fellowship with the homeless people we uh, take clothes we take food oh. so and you know I know a lot of people in this church but he's not only my brother and my friend but I look up to Robin oh. even though I got to look down but I look up to uh, Robin. <laughs> here we go here we go right I, I look I look just up just when to, you was getting right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just when I, oh come on now you know I got to be there no. oh uh, but I look up to Robin because I've never seen somebody are so selfless. Oh. He cares about what other people do and wow. what they need Thank and, you. and what what's, what's, what he can do to help them. And he's always been that way. And since he's been a member of this church, he's done that and so much. So I just want to say thank you for all you do. Thank you for being a volunteer. Absolutely. <laughs> and you too can be a volunteer. <laughs> and let me, let me just say that though. You guys, uh, you know, communing with Exit Zero there in Jeffersonville, you know, if you guys don't know, if you're, you know, visiting, you know, St. Stephen has a campus there in Jeffersonville, Indiana, so it's so good that St. Stephen's hand is there in the community. That means a lot. Absolutely. Sunday school classes that wow. does it every uh, third Friday. Wow. So what month. can someone do if they want to, if they don't have time, how can they donate resources? Yeah, they can donate. They can contact me. Okay. Uh, or contact Indiana campus. Right. Okay. That's wonderful. All right. So y'all see Robin, he's always here and help out. See how you can help out with the exit zero. So the other guest we have is Sister Shikanda James. She doesn't say a lot, but she does when you talk to her. Yeah. So. <laughs> but I want to thank her because yesterday she just really stepped up and did a lot to make sure yesterday went the way it was. But Shikanda, why do you volunteer? Hold the mic up. 
<laughs> Just well, pretend one, you're singing. <laughs> one, because I love my church. Yeah. You know, and it's not about getting paid. I even say that in the workplace. You 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 feel appreciated. You want to give back mm-hmm. some way, you know. So I don't mind. I I'll, I'll help wherever, mm-hmm. whenever. You see, I just I, plus I have that take charge, you know. <laughs> Spirit. <laughs> Try to you know get things done. You want things to run smoothly. So I, I don't mind. I love it. I love the people. You know. I love you all. Aww. You all are my family. Aww. So That's I so thank sweet. you all. So you heard it here, and I appreciate. These are just two of our amazing volunteers, but we have so many. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for all that you do week after week, what you do in the ministry, the ushers, the deacons, the trustees, all the volunteers, the choir, all your sacrifices for coming out to be a part, to do God's work uh, and volunteer your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And I appreciate it. Thank you all. And that's going to the ushers, like you said, the greeters. Everybody. And so next time the ushers trying to direct you where to go, just follow them, okay? Don't get mad at them. Smile. Smile. All right. Well, we thank you so much. Hey, we're going to get ready to get to our next guest coming up here in a bit, but we're getting ready to do our pew check. We're going to check in to see who is worshiping with us online and in the house. And so we told you that this week that Simmons College um, awarded and, and uh, basically honored a lifelong yeah. educator for JCPS, Diane Porter. Yes. And so the question is, who is a teacher or educator that made a big impact in your life? You can go ahead and answer that question online. Mr. And Derek Carr that. is going to get someone out of the congregation. Who okay. Answer the question, though, real quick. For me, it was, um, I would have to say, my resource coordinator. And, um, God, I don't know why. It, first, it was R. Lisa Brown Farley that mm-hmm. was my first resource coordinator. A lot of people know her. She's also a St. Stephen member. Just she took her time with us. And um, Calvani uh, Spalding mm-hmm. was who was her replacement when she left and went somewhere else in JCPS. And they just made a difference because yeah. they cared about us. And then I am DEI, so representation was important. And yes. they were african-american they looked out for us they knew our culture and they just treated me right and it just made a difference in my life that is wonderful okay derek's coming to grab a answer from one of you all i will have to say it was one of my sixth grade teacher i had a lot of wonderful teachers but it was my sixth grade teacher mr bowden and i was a very shy girl believe it or not and so we had something called this day in history he did he was my social studies teacher and he always did something called this day in history where he would talk about a historic moment. And on my birthday, he said, this day in history, a girl with a golden voice would go on and change the world. He set something forth in me in sixth grade. I hated my voice. He called me the golden voice and gave me the confidence. And I'll never forget that. You see how important teachers are? Yes. I got to find him though. I've been trying to find him on social media, but I got to say, Mr. Bowden, thank you for believing in all right, uh, Mr. Derek Carr, who do we have? So I have a beautiful young lady with me. And who's what is your teacher? name? Yes, who's a teacher? See, look how God work. Hold on. What's your name? Nisha. Oh, Nisha what? You just one name? Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you heard the question. Nisha is also one of our volunteers. She was here with us yesterday. We had a yes. great time. So thank you for that. Uh, but Nisha, uh, so I want you to answer the question, and then I want you to tell us why you became a teacher. Um. My favorite teacher was my second grade teacher. Her name is Miss Rosemary Browder, and she just saw something in me to push me and to help me learn better. So Aww. I really, I, I remember her from then. Uh, I used to be a teacher. Uh, I'm a special education teacher at JCPS, but now I'm in a leadership role for special education. Go ahead, girl. And uh, it's just my passion to help uh, the kids who have differences. Oh, oh, come on. Wonderful. That just make you feel all warm and fuzzy. I it is know. so not. <laughs> Nisha, how long have you been a member of St. Stephen? Since 1998. Ooh. Wow, yeah. I remember Choir Kenosha. Yeah, yeah. them trips. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you. Thank you for all you've done and uh, all you do with the kids and everybody, even with your own daughter. So God bless you. We love you, Nisha. Love you. Hey, uh, Derek, I think DeSantos wanted to say something. You, Descendants, you raised your hand up. Now, do you have a teacher you can remember, though, in your memory, somebody that stuck out to you that helped you? Uh, my second grade teacher, also Miss Bright. She, she really pushed me to learn, and she did a lot for me. 
Oh, oh man, that amen. So wonderful. Something about that second grade. That second grade teacher. Yes, yeah. yes. All right. Well, we are joined by Mr. Rick Smith with Simmons College. Everybody, let's show some love for Mr. Rick. Dr. Rick, thank you. Thank you so much, Rick, for joining us today. Now, you're new to Simmons, so tell us a little bit about yourself, but you're not new to St. Stephen, but, um, and a lot of people are familiar with you and your family, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your role. Well, I was just having a conversation with Angela here just a little while ago uh, and had that Louisville conversation, and you always start with, where did you go to Where'd school? Where did you go to school? So, of course, where I went to school, doesn't matter where I went to college. And then <laughs> right. I, high school. And then I have a doctorate. That, that doesn't school. matter. I went to high school at Fern Creek High School. So okay. I'm a Fern Creek oh. High School alum, 1985. With, with Stefan Johnson. <laughs> with Stefan. Well, Stefan was a freshman my senior year. Oh, okay. I'll let Stefan tell that story, but I had a little something with helping him get started in the television uh, oh. industry. Ooh, wow. we can't wait to get and more. And some people know my brother, Lawrence Smith. But I have two other brothers, and my, my, uh, my father, Paul and Mary Smith, retired from the Air Force wow. uh, back in the mid-'70s, so that's what brought us back to Louisville. But they're from Danville, Kentucky, not too far from here. Wow, and your handsome father is here today. Father, when you raise your hand, he is, there he is. There's his dad. There. And, and my significant other, Dr. Tashika Carlton, is back there. Wonderful. So, so certainly not a, a stranger to St. Stephen and certainly the Louisville community, so it's great to be here. Now, some people may know I was in television, too. I spent about eight years in television, started at Wave TV. Yeah. I was at WHS and spent time in, uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio, in television. So I, I've had, the, fortunately, the blessing of being on CNN and other national networks, but I can tell you, that this is now, I can say, my career is actually has reached its pinnacle because I'm on your show. <laughs> oh, look at him. That's what's up. He know, he know, look, look he know how to. He know what to uh, say, yeah, don't he? he? Know what to say, right? <laughs> we can slide him at cool 20 after this is over. But <laughs> Rick, thank you so much. Absolutely. So many exciting things are going on over at Simmons College. Derek, Falcons, excitement. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, why don't we talk a little bit about Simmons was in the news all this week? Let's talk about the honor did, did for Diane Simmons Porter. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Simmons was absolutely new. Yes. Tyler down there, he's, he was the person <laughs> who helped me coordinate the news because I absolutely could not do it myself. And Deja's over here. We all had a, play, had a, had a part in that. But I tell you what, if you, if you missed Simmons in the news last week, then I don't know what to say because we were all over the place. Um, what can I say about Diane Porter that, pe that probably hasn't already been said? Yeah. It was such a wonderful opportunity for us to dedicate that teacher education building to someone who, who so many people can come back and say that she has certainly touched their lives. She certainly touched mine. Been a, a very influential person and just helped many people in in Louisville. So we're so glad to be able to ded dedicate that program on a Wednesday, the building on Wednesday. Later in the day, we gave tours at the facility. Uh, this teacher education program, I think you'll see some teacher, your, uh, some of the... the Talk about the facility, the though. This is a brand new facility. It used it to is. belong to, I think, the Better Business Bureau. It was Bureau. the Better Business Bureau, and now it is owned by Simmons College of Kentucky. Wow. <laughs> And right now, what you're looking at is pictures from the press conference. There's Miss Diane Porter wow. and Mr. Lucian yeah, Yates. Yeah, Dr. Was, Yates is yes. there. Dr. Yates was tapped by Dr. Cosby to help lead this program. Uh, we actually did this program under Dr. Yates' leadership in record time because we all know we need more African-American uh, teachers. Yes. Uh, we can all go back. I heard you talking about some of the folks who have been influential in, mm -hmm. in your lives and who are teachers. So many of those are African-American teachers. But sadly, too many of us did not have a lot of African-American teachers. Right. So in Jefferson County, we want to do something about that. So Simmons, uh, once again, answered the bell created this program to try to get more uh, teachers of color into our school system. Wow. Representation is so important. You have to be able to see yourself, uh, see what you can do, and just being a DEI, this is just great work, great work that Simmons is continuously doing and looking back to see how to make it equitable for Absolutely. all people. Absolutely. And now that we have awareness, now that we have the program, how can somebody get attached to this? What, what can they do to be a part of this? Well, I'll tell you what, Simmons is actively enrollment, enrolling. We have over 500 students there. Dr. Cosby tells the story so often about when he came to uh, and helped breathe new life into this college. We had nothing. We had no students. We had no buildings. We had no faculty. We had nothing, no accreditation. Now we're able to reclaim all the buildings, yeah. which is wonderful. We've had a big announcement we'll talk about here in just a minute. We have over 500 students. Wow. 
you know, it is one of, just in May, May 12th, our graduation on Mother's Day, which is going to be so special. We have 32 graduates coming up. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, so this, to answer the question, how can you get involved, one way you can get involved is to be a student. There are so many people that, for, for whatever reason, post-secondary education was not in the cards for them, for whatever yeah. reason. Well, Simmons gives people an opportunity to come back and get back in school. We have the EL, ELA program, ELA. but you know all about that program. Yeah. And you have to be nice to me because I hear you I am. in my class. I am. I hear you. My class, your class is coming <laughs> up. Absolutely, Dr. Smith. What do you absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I teach organizational ethics. So we have so many different programs to offer people. And also, for people who may have already done that, uh, completed their their post-secondary journey, or may not be wanting to go back to school right now, they can help us by helping with donations. Yeah. We need it, it, schools; their business. We have it takes a lot of money yeah. to run these schools and all these programs that we're talking about. So, if you go to our website, you, there's a donation page. Lots of different ways to give there, and I'll talk about one here in just a minute that we announced. All right. Well, we just passed a picture that actually goes along with the next story that we're going to talk about. Tori McClure, who is the president for Spalding University, and she's actually getting ready to retire. She came on the stage on Thursday during the Memoriam to Movement celebration. There we go right there. And uh, the other lady, who's the other lady? I believe she was the Sisters she's of Nazarene. Sisters of Nazarene. Yes. Nazarene. And uh, they made a huge announcement. They did. Drum roll, please. Okay. Drum roll. Okay, well, this, this what was the announcement for those who may have missed it? Well, this is actually a game changer. Game changer. Because uh, many people know until now, we didn't own our own housing. Right. So students, we had, we had housing leads through other means, but we didn't own our own. You know, Dr. Kazi, but we want to own our own. Oh, mm -hmm. So the announcement was that uh, earlier in the year, Dr. Kazi received this phone call from Tori McClure and said, hey, would you like to buy a dormitory. Okay, did you hear what he said? He received a, a phone dormitory. call from Tori McClure saying, do you want to buy a dormitory? Simmons does not have a dormitory. And they were actually in partnership with Spalding. Spalding was using Absolutely. some space. Absolutely. U of L was allowing students to utilize some space. And so, so, so what, continue from there. I, I can't even touch how Dr. Cosby tells this story. But at that time, she said $6 million. And he immediately said yes. We didn't have six million dollars. <laughs> That's Dr. Cosby. We, we did not have six million dollars, but through the grace of God, we were able to say yes. yes, we raised six million dollars. So, so that was announced, and a big piece of that was from one of our own junior Bridgman and his family donated one million dollars to this wow. cause. Wow. So that took us over the finish line. Absolutely. So, I mean, but talk about, first off, that was a steal for a $6 million price absolutely. tag on that type of building. Talk absolutely. about the building and how many well, doors. Well, the building, there are over 300 rooms that are available, so we'll be able to house students. Wow. So students, already students are coming from around the country. We had a student on the, on the program uh, last week from Puerto Rico. We are drawing students from not only around the country, but from around the world, and that is an amazing thing. But where do, where, where do they live? Until that time, we had to lease. We had to find places for them. Well, now we have our own. We have our own dormitory that is literally across the street from our administration building. So in the last few minutes we have, there was a couple announcements. What's the one thing you want to say to leave with us as we get ready to go? Well, one of the things that I want to say is, first off, thanks everyone for the support. We launched something called the 1930 Society because uh, – Look, uh, Simmons College, for more than 94 years, lost out on a lot of its history. So, so to honor that legacy, we, call, we launched something called the 1930 Society. So someone who wants to be an honorary alum of Simmons College, they can go to our website, and for a donation of $1,000 per year, they can be honorary alum or ambassador for Simmons College. So we have lots of information on our website. Encourage people. You asked earlier, how can people help? Well, that's one way they can help. They can be an honorary alum or an ambassador of Simmons College of Kentucky. Wow. <clears throat> I saw something phenomenal take place. And, you know, I grew up holding this Church of God in Christ. Well, the husband, Church of God in Christ. And I saw how Tober took that offering up on uh, <laughs> Thursday and how all of those Absolutely. will be yeah. uh, honorary members of the night. Honorary members. Yes. I've never seen – it's called crowdfunding. Uh -huh. And I've, I've been a long time uh, in fundraising business. We raised over $100,000 in one day. Listen, you want to raise a good offering, you get a pastor to take up that offering, all right? That's what we call it. Absolutely. But that was truly amazing, and a lot of students were going to benefit because of, those, uh, because of that generosity. Um, Rick, anything else to let everyone know before you go? 
Oh, absolutely. We have so many things coming up. First off, go to our website. That's the best place to get everything. But we have something called Race to Greatness coming up April 24, 21st, honoring black jockeys and, and how they have really played into the whole horse racing industry and some of the greatest jockeys ever. We have our Simmons Fest is June 29th. And later this week, we have our open house for our Master's in Medical Science program. Wow. It is a pre-med program. So if you want to become a doctor, come to our open house. It's 6 to 8 on Wednesday. You can learn all about that program. We just recently started our law program, our pre-law program. So Simmons is absolutely taking off. Wow. And thank you for everyone in the shirts that's helped make that happen. Well, Rick, before you go, one of your former uh, classmates is causing problems over there. Always. I'm talking about Stephon I, I, I felt him in back of me. <laughs> I just got to say something. He just, oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> but, Rick, we thank you so much for everything that you do, and we encourage everyone, if you're looking for a cause to support, you are sowing into good ground with Simmons College of Kentucky. Now, y'all have housing. Listen, yeah. this is just housing. amazing. and It, just it is a game like, changer. I mean, this is derby season, and everyone loves a story of a long shot, you know? Yeah. And so Simmons continues to be the little engine that could. And now y'all a big old locomotive. Absolutely. <laughs> really doing some things. And so uh, we're so grateful for that. Thank you, Rick, so much. Thank you so much for having me here. All right, Derek Carr, I'm going to toss it over to you. Let's get our hearts and minds ready for worship. You want touch? We need touch Stefan on his <laughs> Right. He definitely right? <laughs> needs a word. Uh, but I guess I'm just inspired by the fact that I remember Simmons not having anything. Yeah. And now they have so much. Y'all hear what he said? Yes. And they continuing to grow and grow and grow. But I know why that is because a man was put in place mm. that put God's first. He always puts God first. And guess what? If you don't have what you want or you don't have what you need, if you put God first, he'll give you more than you asked for. So you can be the Simmons story. It can be for all of you. So whatever you need from God today, prepare your mind and your heart for worship. Because God desires that. It's beautiful outside. He's blessed us to see another day. You might as well go ahead and give him praise. You already got an opportunity. You might as well just say thank you for all he's done and all he continues to do. So let's just get your mind stayed and focus on the Lord this morning. Let's get ready for worship. Here are your church announcements. Missions and Outreach Ministry needs your help. During the month of April, they're accepting diapers and pull-up donations. Drop-off will be at Family Life Center. For more information, contact Steve Shaw at sshaw at sclive.org or Elena Middleton at amiddleton at sclive.org. St. Stephen Youth Revive Ministry and Youth Choir. Active, a call to ignite victorious excellence. All rehearsals will be at 6.30 and on the Louisville campus. Check out these rehearsal dates. The youth choir will be making their debut on Whiteout Wednesday on July 17th in celebration of Pastor Cosby's birthday. For more information, contact Brian Bosley at bbosley at ssclive.org. Men's Ministry presents Spring into Home Ownership Seminar, Saturday, April 13th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon at the St. Stephen Family Life Center Multipurpose Room Number 1. Do you have any questions about buying a home? Curious about your current loan? Are you a senior with questions about homestead exceptions? Not Done Yet Crew Upcoming Events. Tuesday, April 16th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. All About Your Legal Affairs, Wills and Probate, presented by Passions Fitzgerald, Attorney at Law. Come learn about handling your legal affairs. Bingo and lunch will be available. Tuesday, April 30th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., it's a hat affair. We're going to have a parade of hats. The seniors will have their own derby celebration, hat contest, along with food, fun, and fellowship. Please register in advance for these events by contacting Rev. Josie Gilbert at jgilbert at sscelive.org or call the Family Life Center at 502-583-6798. 2024 Saints Football and Cheer. Currently looking for coaches and accepting kids from 5 to 11 years old. Contact Ty Anderson at 
724-0208 or Dina Butler at 502-320-3599. Spring Fashion and Home Decor Sale on the Hardin County Campus. Hosted by the Prayer Ministry, Sunday, April 28th, immediately after service. Save the date. St. Stephen Baptist Church, Southern Indiana Campus's 23rd Founders Day. Sunday, April 28th at 9 a.m. With special musical guests, Kenny Lewis and One Voice. St. Stephen's Friends and Family Day, Sunday, May 5th on Derby Sunday. Wear your derby hats, invite your out-of-town guests to worship and hear an inspirational word from Pastor Cosby and celebrate the members of the SSC Winner Circle. Hardin County Campus Men's Spring Retreat, Be Yourself Again, Saturday, May 18th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. One day retreat for men and boys of Hardin County. Location, Camp Carlson Army Resort, 9210 US 60, Marlboro, Kentucky 40155. Joel 228, for old men will dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. For more information, contact C. Bronson at ssclive.org. Hardin County Youth School Out Skate Party. Saturday, May 25th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. at Skateland, 1355 South Dixie Boulevard, Ratcliffe, Kentucky, 40160. For more information, contact Aaron Hodges, Hardin County Youth Director, A. Hodges at ssclive.org. Now these are your church announcements. to the Lord because he is good. Come on, let's give God great praise in here. St. Stephen, come on, really, let's give him good praise because God is so good. He is so wonderful for this is the day that the Lord has made and we will all rejoice and be glad in it. Can we give praise for those who are watching online? Come on, let them know you're here. And we thank you for tuning in. And if you're watching from any other campus, it's time for worship. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to give him some praise. Open your mouth and shout hallelujah.
like this next part of the song, everybody can participate. Come on and put your hands together all over the building. It's a simple call and response, so you can just really repeat after me, amen. Here we go. Say, blessed be the name. The name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Say the name. scripture this morning will be coming from Psalms 97 and it reads the Lord is king let the earth rejoice let the father's coastlands be glad dark clouds surround him righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne fire spreads ahead of him and burns up all his foes his lightning flashes out across the world the earth sees and trembles the mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness. Every nation sees his glory. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh, heavenly father. It is once again that we come before you, Lord God. First to give you glory, honor, and praise. That is due to you, Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for another chance just to come into your house and worship your holy name. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for another day's journey, Heavenly Father, 
a day that has never been seen before. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you just for the activities of our limbs, Heavenly Father. Eyes to see, arms to raise, legs to walk, ears to hear. We just want to say thank you, Heavenly Father. As we prepare, Lord God, to continue on in worship, we ask to show yourself mighty and strong as you, as you already have. We ask that you walk the aisles, walk the pews, that you may get all the glory, Heavenly Father, that is due to you. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you will just be with our pastor as he pro proclaims a life-changing word. Use him in a mighty way, Lord God. Right now, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ all over him that he may proclaim your word in a mighty way. Oh, Lord God, we turn these services over to you. Have your way, Lord God, have your way, have your way. These and all the blessed words in Jesus Christ's name, let the church say amen and amen. Those of you all remember this song, let's sing it together. Everybody sing, Lord. Hey, come on, my senior saints, and sing it with me. Oh. Watching over, watching over me, over me, my Lord. Come on, sing it all. witnesses in here this morning who want to stand to your feet and sing it with us. Hey! The angels keep watching over me. Come on, let the world know this shame. time on the organ. I want you to, while he's playing, get it in your spirit. You didn't even know Taylor was around you, but the angels were moving and declaring victory over your life. Hey, the angels, come on, say
preaching over here. I didn't get a shout hallelujah. I said I didn't get a shout hallelujah. If you know that the angels are watching over you. I dare you look at somebody and say I'm protected. I'm protected. I'm protected. I'm protected. I'm protected. It was nothing but his angels. Oh, that's mighty good to me. I grew up on music like that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody know that the Lord is great? He's a great God. He's a holy God. Can we worship God this morning?
great is our God. Come on, somebody worship him. Come on, somebody worship him. Come on, this is a good place to worship him. This is a good place to worship him. Come on, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Somebody lift your voice in this place. He's a good God. He's a good God. And he's able to heal. He's able to deliver. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness. We give you praise. Somebody lift your hands and tell him thank you. Somebody lift your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Check, check. He's a good God. Why don't you just take a second to just think about how good he is. Worthy is the lamb. Hallelujah. My name is Lafayette Calvin IV. It's my task to offer the welcome to you, to our online worshipers. If you just send a, a hand emoji just to say hello, we want to welcome you from all of our campuses. And here in this building, is, is there anyone that's uh, visiting with us for the first time? Uh, if you could just stand, you don't have to say anything. We just want to recognize you and love on you. Amen. Any first time visitors? Amen. We see you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. We see you in the balcony. Amen. Thank you very much. So for our visitors, they're going to give you an offertory um, card. And make sure you fill that card out and put it in the offertory receptacles. Uh, you can put it in during uh, service or hand it to one of the, our ushers. Amen. Again, thank you for coming. A um, couple of church announcements. The youth choir rehearsals will start April the 10th. Amen. So if you've got uh, some youth, we need your voices. Amen. Also, we're going to have a friends and family day. And uh, that information should be on the screen. Amen. Well, we're going to have a friends and family day. All right. So now uh, at this time, we want to pass the love to everyone. If you could stand and greet your neighbor, and then this time we can do the Sunday selfie and just uh, do the hashtag or uh, SSC Live. So if I can get one of my friends, Johnetta, come over here, we'll do the Sunday selfie. Get your phones out, stand up and greet your neighbor and say, God loves you and so do I.
Once again, that was for his glory. Let's show him some more love. God bless you. That was absolutely wonderful. God bless you. St. Stephen Church, it's giving time. It's giving time in the Lord's house, giving time in your house as well. And, you know, the Lord laid it upon my heart today to, to, to talk about the uh, 11th commandment. And, and so thank you. Thank you. Because at 8 o'clock when I said I was going to mention the 11th commandment, people kind of looked at me and they said, well, Pastor Ken, did you bump your head? Are you feeling okay? Are you ready to, to tell us about, um, you know, Daniel's Ark and Noah in the lion's den? No, no, no. The, the 11th commandment, right? The, the, it, take a look in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Jesus says this, a new command I give you, a new command. So the 10 were the old command. Jesus has another one. So in my math, that makes 11 commandments. And here's what it is. Jesus says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, love one another. So that J Jesus says, this is the, the new command. It's not a new suggestion. It's not a new point of view. But Jesus says, look, this is the command. Love one another as I have loved you which means love completely, love self-sacrificially, lo love, love in such a manner that it glorifies God. And that's the way we want to give today. We want to give in the way that glorifies God. You know what? Here at St. Stephen Church, it, we, there's so many different ways to give. You may have already given electronically. You can give online. You can text to give. You can give via Cash App. Uh, also, you can give through the U.S. Postal Service mail. So many different ways to give. But this is the way. Hello, St. Stephen family. This is Kevin James. Did you know that there are many scriptures that talk about giving? Not only giving, but our attitude toward giving. For example, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, the Apostle Paul says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So here's how you can give at St. Stephen Church. Give online at ssclive.org or you can text SSC Live to 833-602-0575 or you can cash at a dollar sign SSC Live 1. You can also mail your check to the attention of the trustee board here at St. Stephen Church at 1018 South 15th Street, Louisville, Kentucky, 40210. God bless you. Let's give together as God has blessed us. Oh
praises to God, God releases blessings. We lift our praise, God releases blessings. Because our praise demonstrates to God that we are, we're spiritually preparing ourselves. That, that we're, we're not ignorant of what's going, around, uh, going on around us in a spiritual dimension. You know, Jesus said, look, my house, if you're going to call my house anything, call my house a house of prayer for all people. Amen. A, a house of prayer. And, and that's what we are here at St. Stephen Church. We're a house of prayer. We're an embassy of heaven, right? We're, we're a little slice of heaven. And one of the things that we like to do is to lift up the prayer concerns of the congregation. We do want to be continuing in prayer for Sister Carolyn Collins, who's the leader of the grief ministry and one of our decision counselors. She's been readmitted to uh, Norton Hospital after having surgery a few weeks ago. So we want to continue to lift her up in prayer. We continue to pray for Sandy Lathan, uh, who has, has cancer. And we, we have a God who is bigger than cancer. Amen? So we're lifting Sandy up in our prayers. Pray that she is, receives that comfort and strengthening and healing. Barbara DeBow is recovering from surgery. We lift her up in prayer. Tony Wilson Browder. We continue to pray for, and also for Rosie Carr, who was recently hospitalized. On, on our Hardin County campus, I, I want us, you know, the prayers of the righteous avail much. The prayers of the righteous avail much. And we want to be lifting up Vincent Barnes and family. He's a member on our Hardin County campus. His sister, Corrine Robinson, passed uh, about the 1st of March. She went on to be with the Lord. Uh, then Vincent's mother-in-law, Eileen Day, suffered a stroke not long after that. And then brother Tony McClay is recovering from a heart attack. That happened in the, in the middle of last month. And then on the, the 27th, uh, his newborn grandson, Liam Carter Barnes, passed away. 
So, you know, some, sometimes troubles seldom come one by one. They, they don't come single file, so you deal with one and then the next and then the next. Sometimes they, they come as a brigade. They, they, they come at battalion strength. And so we, we want to uh, be intercessors on behalf of all of these concerns as we come before the Lord in this time of prayer. So let's bow our heads together as we come before the throne of God's grace. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we've named aloud and before you those who are a part of our uh, concerns as a congregation, they've come to us through the prayer ministry, Lord. We know that these are concerns that have been prayed over already and that they have been reflected and that we want to lift them up as well in this time. Because, Lord, we know that you are ever more eager to hear our prayers than we are even to, to pray them. And, Lord, you know, you know that only a few of our prayers actually get put into words but you are a God who reads our hearts and even, even our groanings, Lord, even our sighs, even our, our weariness, Lord, you, you recognize that and you translate that into a heavenly language of concern and intercession and a, a language of support and, and strengthening. Our Heavenly Father, we pray for one another as we're gathered here in the pews this day. We pray that you would uh, help to lift up those downturned heads, Lord. Some of us came this day with burdens, with concerns, with questions, with doubts. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us unto the times. Strengthen us, Heavenly Father, unto your service. Strengthen us unto your glory. Lord, we know that sometimes you, you remove whatever the obstacle is, but other times you give us the strength to overcome. And so, Lord, we know that you are an all-wise God, and we would never second guess what you're doing in our lives, be it to, to open a door or to close a door, be it to strengthen us or to remove the barrier, the obstacle. But in whatever way you decide to bless us, we will take it, Lord. We will accept it with joy and gladness of heart because we know that, Lord, your, your, your wisdom exceeds our wisdom. Your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And Lord, we depend on that and we celebrate that. So now, Heavenly Father, bless each and every one in the sound of my voice. Bless this church. Bless these households. Bless this community. And now, Heavenly Father, as we prepare our hearts to receive a word, a word of transformation, a word of encouragement, we do so, Lord, with the resolve in our spirits to glorify you in all that we do. This we pray in the name that is above every name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's say together, amen? Amen. amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Are you glad to be here? Amen. Amen. For those who are watching online, again, thank you for watching online. Please share this ministry with all your friends and let them know that St. Stephen Church is online. Amen. Andre Crouch wrote a song a long time ago that uh, says, we need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what shall we do? Wanting you more each day, show us your perfect way, for there is no other way that we can live. And I don't know about you, but I need to hear a word from the Lord today. Don't you need to hear a word from the Lord? Amen. Our pastor has a word for us this morning. After this priest of modest collection, our, our sister here, uh, Sister Courtney Campbell Witherspoon, is going to come and lead us with this simple song that simply says, Without God, I can do nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, I can't do nothing without God. Let's welcome her as she comes and leads us in worship.
you know that your life 
The only reason your life is moving is because you have your sails up. And it's the wind of God, the Ruach of God, the Numa of God, the Spirit of God that is driving you. Amen. I didn't say that the water wouldn't be rough sometimes. Amen. I didn't even say that the water would not be tempestuous sometimes. But if God is in your sails, God will blow you from, from a problem, from trials, from trouble. Without God, without God, without God, I can do what? Nothing. Without God, I can do nothing. But with God, there is nothing I cannot do. If it's a mountain, I can climb it. If it's a valley, I can cross it. If it's sickness, I can defeat it. If it's bills, I can pay it. If I'm down, I can get back up. Hallelujah. My life. Sister Courtney Campbell, thank you so much. To America's greatest choir, thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. I need thee. I need thee, oh. I need thee so bless now my Brothers and sisters, to those who are part of our cyber church, wherever you may be in the world, we welcome you and we invite you also to welcome others to join us in worship this morning. Several years ago, um, Barnetta Cosby helped organize and form a group of ladies who meet faithfully every Thursday to do crafts. There was a woman I'm thinking of right now who's in heaven right now. She was in the Tabernacle Choir. She was a great seamstress. In fact, my robe, my bag, the robe for my bag, she sold it. I've been thinking about her. Um, very short, honestly. 
curling, curling. We want to, Barnett, put Curlin's name in this organization. But they started this crafts group, and it reminded me of my grandmother who used to do a lot of knitting. You didn't throw away socks, y'all. You just knit. And um, while they meet every Thursday, it's really a great fellowship and a great support group. Uh, it, it is like a family to my wife. She will not miss Thursday here at the church. If I got to go somewhere out of town, we got to be back by Thursday. And she told me that uh, they have been working on a quilt that they'd like to present to the church. So I'm going to ask you if um, um, Barnetta, would you come at this time? Thank you, Reverend Cosby. Um. <laughs> She don't call me at home, yeah. It's business today. Wait till later. Okay, I'm gonna quit while we're ahead. Okay. <laughs> but seriously, 13 years ago, um, the women's ministry uh, recognized that there were a lot of women in our church that have a gift of uh, creativity. And uh, the ladies that are standing here on the stage is just a remnant of the ones that, uh, that have uh, gathered over the years. We started 13 years ago, and um, one of the things we do is sew. We make jewelry, hats, purses, whatever, because we all bring different gifts and, and uh and it's open to all the women or anyone that's interested in trying to learn how to do this. We're, this is a quilt that we decided. It's called the um, Underground Railroad Quilt. And uh, we each played a part and a few others because we each made a square in this quilt. And I know um, Black History Month is over and Women's Month has ended. And we just finished Black History season this week. But we're black 365 days of the year. So <laughs> any time that the pastor allowed us to do this, it's black history time. So we, we just want to present this to the church, um, and it will be on display in the Family Life Center. So thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. The best way to maximize church is to get involved in something. Right? Everybody is not supposed to sing in the choir. But maybe you're part of the quoting ministry or usher ministry or greeters. Right? Or a Sunday school class. Right? Get involved. And I'd like to also thank all of the volunteers. We had Volunteer Appreciation Day yesterday. I thank all the volunteers. I am um, in athletic gear, semi, because to, at Hardin County, it's Fitness Sunday. So they're having breakfast in Indiana, showing quilts in Louisville, and fitness in Hardin County. So that's, that's good. All right. This morning, I want to share a thought with you on the word soul, an adverb that modifies something in a sentence, S-O. And when you look at with me at Mark chapter 5, verse 21 through 25, when Jesus had again crossed over by the boat to the other side of the lake. A large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue elite rulers named Jarius came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet 
and pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. One more verse. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Now the sermon today is entitled soul, an adverb modifying something, highlighting something in the sentence. That's the sermon. The series is entitled, Where's the Beef? And you know, those of you who are older know that I borrowed that from a Wendy's commercial which this older lady was showing the difference and contrasting the difference between the hamburger meat on McDonald's and what you get at Wendy's. But I'm entitling the series What's the, Where's the Beef because of a literary phenomenon in the book of Mark. I call the book of Mark the second book, the first gospel written, although chronologically Matthew was listed before Mark. Mark is actually older then Matthew, I call the book of Mark remarkable because it shows and highlights Jesus as being remarkable, a man of power. But there is something in the gospel of Mark that is called Mark and sandwiches, which is to say that there is always, in many instances, at least nine times in the 16 chapters that you have in the Gospel of Mark, a story and then a story inserted in the story and then you go back to the main story. So for example, you read about Jesus cursing a fig tree, then he enters the temple and clears the temple, cleans the temple, and then it goes right back to the fig tree. Or in this instance, you see Jarius, then you see the woman who's hemorrhaging, and then you will go right back to Jarius. It's called the Markin sandwich. And what my professor, Dr. Harold Songer, back in 1980, my first year in seminary at Southern Baptist Seminary, and I was in that class with Jerome Brown, Walter Malone, and we were in that class as young preachers, young pastors. He told us, now, don't forget you have these sandwiches. Story, insert story, go back to story. But always remember, it's the, the story in the middle that's the meat of the story. It's, it's the beef of the story. And I could look at all nine marking sandwiches but I'm going to focus on one and that's the story of Jarius and this woman who is hemorrhaging and then we're going to go, and then it's going to go right back to Jarius but what takes place in the middle of the story is the beef that's going to build up Jarius's faith now who is Jarius we are told that Jairus is the president of the synagogue. The word synagogue literally means the meeting place, the gathering place. And it was for the ancient Jews, the most sacred place in the community. And he is, my brothers and sisters, the president. But in spite of, in spite of his stature, he's got a crisis in his home. It's the crisis of his 12 year old daughter whose life is hanging in the balance and it's flickering like a candle, flickers, going in and out. She's right there in the middle, life flickering, and he's in crisis. He's the president of the synagogue, which means he probably is the most prominent man in the city of Capernaum. What does it tell us? It tells us that trouble does not evade any home. It does not matter how your, what your stature is or how prominent you are. No one will ever be able to put up a sign in their front yard 
that says trouble doesn't come to this address. And I don't care what part of town you live in, trouble will come. His daughter's life, she's 12 years old, and she is on the verge of dying. So what does Jarvis do? He makes his way through the crowd. We're told it's a large crowd. And when we look at the woman who's hemorrhaging, she's going to make her way through the crowd as well. But if you notice that when Jairus makes his way through the crowd, it says, verse 22, then one synagogue ruler named Jairus came there, which means there was no obstructions in Jairus' way getting to the crowd to Jesus. Do you know why? Because when they saw it was Jairus, when they saw it was Jairus, they did what? Why did they move out of the way? They moved out of the way because he was a man of stature. But next week, when we look at the woman who is hemorrhaging, guess what she has to do to touch Jesus? She has to what? Press her way through, which means what? Nobody moved out of her way. For one, she's a woman. She's weak. She's anemic. She's been bleeding for 12 years. So she's weak. She has no stature. We don't know her name. We know Jairus' name. We don't know Jairus' wife's name. Because in the last verse, Jesus will tell Jairus and his wife to give the girl something to eat. We don't, know, we don't even know the girl's name. All we know is Jairus' name because it is a patriarchal. The Bible is patriarchal. That's why you have to be very careful when you study the Bible because everything that is descriptive is not prescriptive. Some things in the Bible are described, but baby, it ain't prescribed. The Bible says that Abraham's wife called him Lord. <laughs> called her husband Lord. I showed it to Barnett in the scripture and she said, yeah, right. It's described, but it won't be prescribed. For example, slavery is described, but it's not prescribed. Are you with me? And so Jairus can get through the crowd. The woman couldn't get through the crowd. And it's a sin to judge people based on artificial, superficial things such as gender, or race, or sexual orientation our zip code, our degrees. The Bible calls that sin. Amen. Because you don't know who you're looking at. The Bible says, be careful how you treat strangers because some have entertained angels unaware. Something happened, I think it was last Sunday, and a man walked in from this side of the church, sat down in this section, white hair, hadn't shaved, kind of less than prestigious and impressive clothing on his back. Older man. When I looked at him, I yelled. I screamed because I hadn't seen him for a while. His name is Norman Simmons. And Norman and his wife Gladys were members of Centennial Olivet Baptist Church when I was a teenager. Yeah. Mentored me, took me on trips, poured into me. And I think about them all the time, especially Gladys who's in heaven. And he came in and sat down, but he didn't look like the mentor of Kevin Cos because when you've done something for somebody, you don't have to put up a whole lot of signs. <laughs> The Lord will bless you because the Lord knows what you're doing. And I said, I hope nobody mistreats him. I hope no one treats him like they treated the woman who was hemorrhaging me. I hope they treat him like Jarius, even though he doesn't look like Jarius and dress like Jarius. I hope they'll treat him like Jarius. And when I looked up and turned around, Sister Beverly Jones, that woman right over here on the second, third row, was turned around talking to him, making him feel important. 
I was just so, I have never been as proud as a pastor. Amen. Because see, it's not the things that you do when people are looking. It's how you treat folk when talk to me somebody. Because you never know, my brothers and my sisters, amen, who you are talking to. Do I have a church in here? That's why, that's why y'all pray for Indiana. Because in Indiana, at the end of the month, they have a uh, Founders Day. And nothing frightens me more than Founders Days and church picnics. Because somebody going to come to somebody's table that you don't know that looks like the hemorrhaging woman and say, can I get a little piece of that ham? And if you got an attitude, then folk, I'm leaving this church. I thought these preacher folk, they want to give me his ham sandwich, they want to give me a piece of chicken. Amen. But if Obama shows up, see, Jesus comes incognito. I was hungry. You fed me. When did we see you hungry? In as much as you've done it to the least of these. And that's why you can't get caught up in crowds. Because the same crowd that will make a way for you one minute will shut a door for you the next. You better serve the Lord. Because crowds are fickle. It says there was a large crowd. And in that large crowd, there were some fans of Jesus. And there were some followers of Jesus. And there's a difference between a Jesus fan and a Jesus follower. Mm-hmm. We have a member of our church who's been in a nursing home for many years. He's a young man. And he's been in the nursing home for 10 years. He's probably, he's, he's in his 30s. And been in the nursing home since he was 20. His brother Shimwell and I, Deacon Shimwell and I went to visit him a couple of Saturdays ago. And we went, he said, thank you, Pastor. You came, you came. And uh, he, uh, he, Shimwell said, well, I'm going to cut your hair. So Shimwell cut his hair. Then I told our great administrator, I told Sherry Mills, I said, he needs to be in a Sunday school class. So he cut his hair, and now he's in a Sunday school class, and he wrote a letter to Sherry Mills, and he said to Sherry, he said, for the first time in 10 years, I'm not existing. For the first time in 10 years, I've got a purpose. I've got some people who love me and who care about me. And he was on the Zoom call today in Sunday school class, and I'm claiming it by the name of Jesus that although he's been in that nursing home 10 years, and if you're watching me, brother, you know if you're watching me, I'm claiming the name of Jesus that you're coming out of there. Y'all don't mind me claiming that thing in the name of Jesus. I claim in the name of Jesus. I, see, I still believe in a God that performs miracles. I believe in a God that can blow your mind if you have faith. We don't need fans. Don't come in here as a fan like you're going to, you know, fist bump Jesus. What's up, Jay? Like he's in heaven fist backing you. What's up, dog? Uh -uh, they don't work like that. He don't need fans. He needs followers. A follower. Let me tell you followers. A fan is at the football game in the stands drinking beer and eating nachos criticizing but a follower is on the field and God wants all of us on the field I'm not necessarily saying that you should be involved in an auxiliary in a church and you should but beyond church see when you do things in church like sing in church or usher in church that's chores When I was a kid, dad said, I want you, it's time to go to work. And then he had me doing things around the house. And then after I went around the house, did things around the house, 
He said, okay, Kevin, good. Next time to go to work. I said, what do you think I just did? He said, chores. He said, we're going to go to work when we leave here. See, anything you do in church is chores. You're supposed to do it because you are a member of the house. Preach, Kevin Wayne Cosby. The work is when you're in the schools, when you're in the streets, on your job, making a difference. And this little girl, she was at the point of death, and she, this father went to Jesus, fell on his knees, and said, Jesus, please come to my house and touch my daughter. Why did he say touch my daughter? He said touch my daughter was because in an earlier story, there was a leper. And the leper went to Jesus, and Jesus touched the leper, and the leper was healed. But you see, my brothers and sisters, just because he wants to bless the leper one way don't mean he wants to bless the next person the other way. God not only moves in a mysterious way, but God works in different ways. And the way he may want to bless somebody else is not the way God wants to bless you. Talk to me, somebody. God can take a crooked stick and hit a straight leg. God can have you on the wrong road and lead you to the right path. Y'all not hearing me. Amen. Uh, and, and that is why you ought not worry about storms. Somebody says, well, why, why, why do we always have to have so many storms? Can I tell you why you have so many storms? God uses storms because God wants to take you to a place where your enemies can't swim. But you ought to holler any way you want to bless me. I will be satisfied. Now, the girl just didn't get sick, y'all. She's 12 years old. 12 years old is the year that she transitions into womanhood. She just didn't get sick. But this leader, Jarius, waited until it was almost too late. Do you know why? Because he's the president of the synagogue and he's concerned about what people are going to think if he associates with Jesus. And my brothers and sisters, you will never get anywhere in life if you are controlled by other people's opinion, if you shape your reality on what, amen, other people feel. God speaking to you in an inner voice and you got these outer critics. Don't listen to the outer critics when God has put an inner voice in you. Amen. Just do what you, God told you to do. Folk will catch up. Folk will catch up. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. God has been good to me. God been good to me. God has been better to me than I could even conceive. I just left Indiana. Church doing well. Having a breakfast over there. I came over here. Shinwell drove me over here this morning. I looked and saw houses, a church that God has blessed us with and land. And I'm going to leave here and go to Hardin County. And they got that land doing well. Then I'm going to go to us on Monday. I'll go back to my college. That was absolutely nothing, but God blew that thing up. I mean, God blew that thing up. And when I, everything I did, if you ask me from the day one in 45 years, everything God told me to do, I had critics. Supposed to have no women up in the pulpit. You ain't supposed to have drums in the church. You ain't supposed to build a, a gym before you build a sanctuary. We build a gym because God told us to do it. And then folk caught up because now everybody got women and everybody got screens and people building family life centers. Amen. And I said we're going to start Simmons and some of y'all looked at me like, ah, oh, I'm tired of Simmons. Ah, talking about behind my back, I don't care. If God be for me, he's more than any Negro who's against me. 
If God's got a blessing with my name on it, God will prepare a table before you. You don't have to have folk to like you or agree with you for God to blow you up. Talk to me, somebody. And that's why you can't be concerned who likes you and who's speaking at you and who calls you, who invites you over to their house. Don't get caught up if God is with you. God will make a way out of nowhere. Hallelujah. We got a new dorm. President of Spalding University called me on the phone and said, Brother President, your students are just, just using space, you're renting space. I mean, almost a million dollars a year to rent space from these students. But she called me on the phone and said, uh, would you like to buy it? I said, how much? She said, six million. I said, yes. Because I heard an inner voice saying yes. And I did not know where the money was going to come from. Because we didn't have it in the bank. But if God tells you to do something, and if you act by faith, God will make a way out of nowhere. And I can believe there's somebody here that can holler that when you look over your life, the only way you can explain where you are is because God did it. And guess what? We got every bit of it. Call some folk up. God will give you favor. Make folk bless you. I started calling folk and they said, here, take this. I said, take this. I called other folk, take this. Then when we got to five million, I needed a million. So I called Junior Bridgman on the phone. He said, let me pray. I said, we got him because if, it, if it's God's will, it's God's bill. If it's God's choice, it's his invoice. It's called faith. You know what faith means? F-A-I-T-H. F stands forward all issues to him. And when you're walking in faith and you don't know how you're going to get healed, how you're going to get blessed, how you're going to deal with your children, you forward all issues to him. That problem that I had, I thought I could not solve. I prayed and I prayed, but I kept getting involved. I turned it over to Jesus and I stopped worrying about it. I turned it over to the Lord and he worked it out. And how many of you can holler, he can work it out if you let him. Y'all remember hmm, the, the, the Central Park Five? Five black young men got accused of raping a white woman in Central Park and they were innocent. Uh, but to play and pander on the racist impulses of people, Donald J. Trump put a ad in the New York Times calling for them to be executed in the electric chair. And they were innocent and pressured and forced against their will by corrupt police to confess. Stayed in jail 13 years. But then one man in the prison said to another man, you know those Central Park Five? He said, yeah, they didn't do that. How do you know? I did it. Just talking. Amen. Only time a fish gets caught is when he opens his mouth. Just talking. He told the wrong person because the wrong person was trying to get time reduced. So he went and 
told the authorities what the man said. They checked his DNA. And guess what they discovered? He did it. And guess what happened to those Central Park Five? They got released and compensated. And guess what happened to Donald J. Trump? The same courtroom that the Central Park Five got convicted in, Donald Trump is going to walk in to the same courtroom. Talk to me, somebody, with a black district attorney, and he's got to stand before a judge and, ask one, and answer one question. How do you plead? Because we serve a God that if you trust him, I don't care how desperate it gets, and ain't nothing desperate like having some crazy kids. Ain't nothing desperate like when you got some children that's got issues. But if you call all the Lord, in fact, I believe sometimes God lets trouble come because you think you all that. See, if he, as long as you're doing well, you come in church and you look at your watch. You don't say amen, you say amen. You don't say hallelujah, you say hallelujah. But then when all hell breaks loose, when you need something from the Lord, you don't have time to be cute. You don't have time to be sedated. You gotta say, Father, I stretch. Help me somebody. I stretch my hand to thee no other help I know and I'm here to tell you he will answer your prayer he will come through for you hallelujah so you can anybody can shout when things are going well but the real test is when you're in a storm now remember we we went from from cable to dish because dish had more channels and I was glad to have Dish because it had more channels. But when a storm came, I tried to get Dish, but Dish don't function in a storm. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you Dish or are you Cable? Because some of y'all can function even when it's a storm. But some of you lose your joy, lose your hope in the middle of a storm. I believe David had cable because David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. In other words, I don't care how desperate the thing is. If you go to Jesus, things will turn around. Do I have a witness in here? Some of y'all complaining. A woman said to me, she said, Pastor, every time I get my money, something breaks down. I got my money the other day and my car broke down. I said, girlfriend, you got it backwards. Your car should have broke down six months ago. The Lord kept it running until you can get your money. And some of y'all should have broke down a long time ago. But the Lord kept you running. Do I have a witness in this place? All you got to do is just be where God wants you to be. And do what God wants you to do. It's just like in football. When you play football, they'll give you a play. And they'll say, run 10 yards. Turn left, turn right, and by the time you get to where you're supposed to be, the ball will be there, but you got to be where I tell you to be. So guess what you do? You run 10 yards, fake right, turn left, and don't worry about it, because when you get to the spot, you turn your head. Open your hands and the ball 
is right where you're supposed to be. If you turn your head, it's where you're supposed to be. Y'all just missed your shout. When you turn your head, it's right where it's supposed to be. Get to where you're supposed to be. Turn your head, and the ball is already there. When you turn your head, because every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing, blessing me every time I turn around. He keeps on blessing me. Let the church say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how desperate it is. This too shall pass. The Lord will turn it around. Do I have a witness? Yeah. Won't he do it? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's already done it for me. Your neighbor ain't shouting with you because you're looking at the wrong neighbor. So look at the other neighbor and say, every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Somebody holler. Yes, Lord. Somebody holler. Yes, Lord. Quit acting cute. Quit acting sadistic. Quit acting sophisticated. And go ahead and say, Lord, thank you in advance for what you going to do. Yes, Lord. I got to get out of here. But I feel God in this place. Let the church say amen. Would you stand all over this room with me, my brothers and my sisters? Is anybody in this room, does anyone really know what it means to be desperate? The text says, so the Lord, Jesus went with him. It says so, say so. But it does not say no. It says so. And the Lord went with him because he asked the Lord. He believed the Lord. He humbled himself. He was not concerned about what other folk thought or said. And the Lord was with him. And right now, my brothers and sisters, just like they sung that song, without Christ, I can do nothing. I invite you right now to come and give your life to Jesus Christ. Become a follower, not a fan. Get baptized. Be where God wants you to be. God will blow your mind. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Come, preacher. Come on. Amen. There will there be one. As our choir leads us his song, why don't you come and be a follower of Jesus?
may not have wanted to come down, but our decision counselors will remain down front. If you so desire to come down to give your life to the Lord, or if you're standing in the need of prayer, amen? Amen. Come on, let's bless the Lord for that word that went forth in this place. So, what a mighty word, what a mighty word. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious God, we come before you, Lord God, just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for reminding us, Lord God, that you're always with us, Lord God. No matter what the storm that we're going through, Lord God, you will be there. And for that, we just want to say thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask as we leave this place with never your presence, go out and tell someone of the God that we serve, a God who is still watching over us, a God who still has all power in his hand, a God who still sits high and looks low. And for that, we just want to say thank you. As we prepare to leave this place with never your presence, cover us with the blood of Jesus Christ to return to your house once more. These and all the blessed we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Let the church say amen and amen.